What's going on guys and welcome back to another video. It's that time of the year again. We have just rounded into 2026 and I wanna give you guys the best updated and most up-to-date settings for recording crystal clear videos with OBS. I'm gonna dive into every single setting and explain to you guys what it is, what it does, and why I'm telling you to set it the way that I am. By the end of this video, your recordings for YouTube or Twitter or wherever you're posting them are going to be crystal clear and very high quality. Now you guys know the importance of recording and uploading videos on other platforms. If you're, let's say a streamer and trying to grow your stream on Twitch, Twitter, Kick, YouTube, wherever it is, uploading videos is going to help promote your stream and get people over to your stream. So if that's you and you're a streamer wanting to know how to record videos, then you guys got to check out the sponsor for today's video, Owned.TV. Owned.TV is your one-stop shop for fresh new graphics for your stream. Whether you're on Twitch, YouTube, or Kick, you'll find something that's a perfect fit for your channel. They offer full themed overlay packages, which are great if you're trying to give your stream a complete makeover, but let's say you're looking to pick up some new alert graphics, don't worry, because they've got you covered there too. You could find single graphics such as alerts, emotes, banners, panels, and logos as well. And one of the best parts about these overlays is that they are completely modular, so if you and your friends all pick up the same overlay, such as this Rodan one right here, you could change the colors and tweak it to match your brand and none of you will have the exact same overlay. If you're looking to take your stream to the next level, be sure to check out own.tv using my link below to support the channel. And don't forget, use code HAMMER at checkout for an additional 50% off your order. Now, back to the video. All right, guys, so we are here and what we are going to do is the first thing we're going to drop down into the settings of OBS right here. And then I'm going to move this over here so you guys can see it. So in the first tab here, there's nothing really important aside from source alignment snapping. You can enable this. This will help you build your scenes within your preview in OBS. But again, this doesn't affect the quality of your recording. Over in the appearance tab, again, this is just the way that OBS looks to you. I use the Yami theme on default with a font size of 10 and a density of comfortable. Heading over here, this stream tab, we're going to completely ignore this. This has nothing to do with recording. We're going to go to the output tab and then up at the top under output mode, we're going to change it to advanced. Then you're going to come over here and click the recording tab. Now, this is literally where the magic happens, guys. So pay attention right now. So as for your recording path, you're going to click browse and set this to wherever you want your recordings to be saved. Under recording format, I record an MP4, however, you know, you could record in FLV or MKV, any of those. The thing is, when you're recording in MP4, if you blue screen or something in the middle of your recording, the recording does become corrupt. So keep that in mind. Uh, for your video encoder, I use NVIDIA NVENC H.264. Now, this is because I'm using an NVIDIA RTX GPU. If you're using an NVIDIA graphics card like me, use this video encoder. If you're using an AMD, use the AMD equivalent. For audio encoder, I have it set to FFmpeg AAC. For audio track, I have it set to one, just one audio track. We're doing very simple audio recording here. Um, no rescale output, keep this disabled. And then we're gonna scroll down and this is really where the meat and potatoes is of how your recording is going to look. So for your rate control, you're gonna wanna set this to constant QP, okay? And then your constant QP, you could set this anywhere between 16 and like 24. The lower the number, the higher the quality, but the larger the file size. And when I say larger the file size, I mean like drastically larger. It's going to be at 16 CQP, like what I'm running here. My files are massive. I'm talking like 10 gigabytes for five minutes type of massive. So I would set this to like 20. There's not that big of a difference between 16 and 20. Set it to 20. And if you can crank it even lower, if you have the space for it, go for it. I wouldn't really recommend going any lower than 16 here. Uh, for key, keyframe intervals, you're going to set this to two. For preset, you're going to want to set this to P7 or slowest, best quality. If you're getting encoding overload errors while you're recording, feel free to drop this down to P6 or P5. It still is really good quality. It's not, you know, optimal quality. It's not going to be the best that it could possibly be, but some people's computers really can't handle that. So feel free to juggle between P5 and P7 here. Uh, for tuning, absolutely set this to high quality. For multi-pass mode, I have mine set to full resolution, but again, you could set yours to quarter resolution. It's not going to make that big of a difference when it comes to graphical fidelity. So if you're getting those encoding overload errors, if you're struggling to record, feel free to drop this setting down as well. Uh, for profile, you want to set this to high. For these two, look ahead and adaptive quantization. Uncheck look ahead and make sure adaptive quantization is checked and set your B frames to two. 
Now over in your audio tab here on the left hand side, this is going to be where you set up your audio, right? So let me give you a few examples. If you are just a regular gamer, you know, using a gaming headset, headset, microphone combo, you're going to set your desktop audio to your gaming headphones, whatever you're hearing audio out of, and your microphone is going to be your headset microphone. Now, if you're using, uh, you know, a standalone USB microphone or something on an arm and you're listening to audio through your headphones, set your headphones to desktop audio and your microphone, make sure you set it to that microphone. Mine looks a little weird here because I'm using a Go XLR. So all of my stuff gets routed into my Go XLR and then gets output into one audio track that is the uh, broadcast stream mix that's why you see mine here so don't copy mine unless you have my exact setup basically if you're using a headset with a microphone put your headset speakers here put your microphone here vice versa it's very it's pretty self-explanatory uh scrolling down in here nothing else crazy if you want to do some hot keys for uh push to mute and stuff like that on any of your audio tracks you could do that come over here to the video tab though this is another really important part when you're recording videos okay so Whatever you're gaming in, whatever your main monitor is, whether it's 4K, 2K, 1080, uh, that is going to be your base canvas resolution. I have a 2K monitor. My base canvas resolution is 2K. Now, if you wanted to record in, let's say, 1080 or 720 and downscale it, um, you would then set that here under output scaled resolution. I would then set this to 1920 by 1080 or 1280 by 720 if I wanted to downscale my recording. I don't want to downscale it. I'm recording, I'm, you know, my monitor's in 2K and I'm recording in 2K for YouTube right now. YouTube supports 2K video. So I'm recording in 2K. So my output scaled resolution is exactly the same as my base resolution because I'm not downscaling. If you do downscale from 4K or 2K, you know, to a lower resolution, you will enable these options here, which are downscale filters. In these options, you're going to want to choose the Lanxos option. It's the third option down. It's going to give you the best downscaling filter for the best quality. As for common FPS values, this is going to be the FPS of your recordings and your videos. If you want to record videos in 30 FPS or 24 FPS, make sure you set that here. I'm recording in 60 FPS, thus my number is 60. And then again, on the left-hand side, we have more hotkeys. You can pretty much hotkey any function within OBS. And then there's nothing else super important in any of these. Um, for recording except for in the advanced tab here under the recording section if you are recording in that mkv format you can have this box checked that automatically remuxes the mp4 uh remuxes the mkv into an mp4 so meaning that your mkv file which you know you can't really use with many programs will now get remixed down to an mp4 file at the end of your recording when you go to save it so if you're recording an mkv and you you know, really want to make sure that it, let's say you, your computer blue screens in the middle of your recording, if it's a live, you know, long recording, um, and you don't want to lose what's been recorded so far, record an MKV and have this box checked so that once you stop the recording, it'll turn your MKV file into an MP4. So that's pretty much it, guys. I really hope that I was able to help you out. If I did, hit the like button, share it with someone who needs to know this stuff. I stream on Twitch, by the way, twitch.tv slash hammerdance if you want to come hang out with me live Monday through Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern. Subscribe to the channel if you're an upcoming content creator, a streamer, a YouTuber, whatever it is. That's what we're going to be covering this year in 2026. I have an entire series coming out on how to become a streamer from step one to having viewers and potentially pushing Twitch partners. So if that's something that interests you, um, you know, definitely give a subscribe here on the channel, turn on post notifications so you don't miss the next time I post a video. But anyways, guys, thank you all so much for watching and listening in. I'll see you all in the next one.